we've did, been doing quite a bit of teaching lately with concerns to the magnificence of God, His greatness, and His overall entity, essence. We know that God is a singular God. From our particular study, when we go back into the Old Testament, we know that there is only one God. But the concept of God, what is God in nature? For God is actually above nature, outside of nature. For all observable nature, which we can see, was created by God as we were formed and made of things previously created. In the grand design of God, we are only able to examine and know those things which are particular to our universe, our cosmos, things observable, things which we are able to investigate scientifically or with the senses, with our emotions, our minds, or our imagination. But God is far greater than all of these things. For all of these things are the human attributes from which we have, which was designed in us, made and formed in us by this great entity that we call God. The word God, of course, when we look at the Holy Bible, was uh, translated from ancient Hebrew terms in the beginning, such as Elohim. And the meanings, of the exact meanings of the words depends a lot on the application, of course, and what source of writing that we're reading. But what we want to look at and examine a little bit today is a particular reality, the particular intimacy within creation that allows us to interact, to know about, to find our place in relationship with God. Now, in defining God, of course, the only way that we are able to make definition is from a human perspective. Now, let's separate and talk about that for just a little bit as we begin to look at this. God, the singular God, greater than all creation, all observable things, all things theoretic, material, non-material, interdimensional, multiverse, alternate realities, all mass of the universe. Everything was conceived and designed and structured by an almighty, perfect God. Something that we are unable, inept to, as human beings, understand from a human perspective because we just don't have the tools. We don't have the ability in our imagination or our mind to think on that level. So taking that into consideration, let's, let's look at how things would seem from our uh, modeling, a, a parable of our thinking in imagination, of what it would be like from God's perspective to consider man. First off, to find the totality of the essence, the being, the entity of God. We do not have the instrument to look far enough to see the physical full evidence in order to build a model. Even with the wonderful invention and manufacture and uh, capabilities of the Hubble Space Telescope, we're able to look out into the far reaches from our perspective, into places never imagined to even exist before we had the optical evidence of photos taken of the deep space field from Hubble. But even that is the tiny, tiny part of humanity looking out into the greater creations of his creator God. Now, coming back to our perspective towards God, and we're going to move into an area to where we 
go to the place of intimacy. But first, in just considering the sheer greatness of scale of God compared to us as creation, is unfathomable in model. So all we can do is do our very best from our reality, from our particular place in creation, our particular point of observation to consider God. First off, the writers of the Bible, which is a particular history of particular communications of particular holy men of God, holy simply implies and means they were separated in their searching of God, separating in their position with relative to other humanity. They were separated in their search for God. And these men, being in that position, pleased God in the word that in his ability, he was able to interact with them through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells us that they wrote the scriptures as they were inspired by the Holy Ghost, inspired by God to write words that men could comprehend and understand in written language of things that God communicated to their understanding in spiritual language. So when we begin to study and evaluate Scripture, understand it is inspired of God, but it's translated from spiritual knowledge, spiritual intimacy and understanding through men to us, that they wrote to us according to the inspiration of the greater Spirit of God that was operating through them as them being holy. Now, when we begin to look at the understandings of intimacy is when we move into the New Testament uh, as far as the particular history of the biblical people, which includes all of us, by the way, the particular peoples of that particular history that we call the Holy Bible, which tells of our journey and our relationship with God in written form. But it opens up a opportunity for a greater experience in God that we term the spiritual experience. So in this particular examination, let's go to the platform of the spiritual experience, which I will term an intimate experience. Now, there may be many types of spiritual experiences, but there is only one true spirit of Almighty God. Only one spirit of the one singular God called the Holy Ghost. We call it the Holy Spirit. Translation, ghost, spirit, meaning the same thing in our language. We're told in John, the Gospel of John, by the writer John, that The Word was with God in the beginning, and the Word was later made flesh and dwelt among us. And he was our light, that the glory of God would shine among men, but that the darkness of this world could not comprehend it. Well, that's not too hard to understand, that the world could not understand the the true light of God. We're creations. God being greater than us, the light of his light shining, in other words, his truth, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Now, there are many sons of God, the Minaha Elohim in the Hebrew, many sons, other creations, extraterrestrials, such as angels, the heavenly host, many different types, even types of angels. Uh, and from God has a vast creation out there. We are a particular creation. But within this particular creation, God so loved the world, so loved this particular creation, mankind, that he made opportunity for man to advance to a second level of being from what he is. And that opportunity came when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, begotten meaning born in creation, born of creation. 
But Jesus, being the only begotten Son of God, was different than any other man. Now there's people out there that will tell you that Jesus was just a man. No, he was not just a man. There were differences about Jesus that made him different than any other creature that ever walked the earth. For one, he had no earthly father. And that makes a big difference. Jesus was birthed by, at conception by the intimacy of the Spirit, causing a miracle conception within a virgin human named Mary. Mary was a virgin. And the Spirit conceived in her that she would bear this very special miracle child. And this very special miracle child, this particular accommodation that the great and magnificent, omnipresent, singular God made for mankind to be advanced was accomplished by miracle. And when Jesus was born and when he walked the earth, he was like no other man. In his flesh, he experienced the same types of things that other men experienced in their flesh. He was even tempted in his flesh. The only difference being is that he never conceived sin within his imagination or his thought in the result of process of entertaining such temptation. Whereas human beings are formed, born and shaped in iniquities, the Bible says, in sin and iniquity. Jesus was not born in sin and iniquity. So if anyone's told you that he was born in sin and iniquity, he was not. He was born of a perfect spirit. A perfect spirit that had no generational sin. His flesh was embodied by, created by, formed and made by, conception of miracle, by a perfect spirit. Creating a new creation in mankind's reality. And as a result of that, Jesus, in fulfillment of his mission role on earth as a man, being the greatest extension, the most personal extension of the singular almighty God of glory, the omnipresent spirit among men. Paul said in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 that this Jesus, speaking in context of the scriptures, was the image of the invisible God. Now just think about that for a moment. Jesus Christ was the image of the invisible God. He's saying, Paul is saying that God is invisible to man. We see his evidence all around us. We see the works of creation all in nature. Creation in nature's laws and physics. But God himself in image was invisible except by the image of Jesus Christ. Now think about that for a moment. Now Jesus, when he prayed as a man, praying unto the Spirit, the omnipresent Spirit, which flowed and operated through his body. Yes, he had a human brain. That human brain functioned and had a mind and had a large room of imagination within it, as any other individual has. His except being inspired by a perfect spirit, visitation operating through his imagination and his brain as he functioned his ministry here on earth. Now I realize that we're taking this into a realm of thinking you're not quite used to hearing or going. But what I want to make clear to you is that we are a very special accommodation, a very special creature, an intimate creature with God by the accommodation, the accommodation 
of Jesus Christ ministry, shedding of his blood to cover our sins, that we, through the instruction of Christ and those whom he instructed to instruct the church, the apostles, in the epistles, gave us the road map that we might find life. Gave us the keys to the kingdom. Gave us the instructions to be baptized. Jesus first, while he was alive walking, said, Be baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Peter later taking that in 2.38 and telling what we must do. The question was, men and brethren, what must we do? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then the promise, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. When you completely fulfill these other two requirements of instruction. Thus beginning the new birth experience, the new creature, the transformation into a spiritual creature. You see, the special accommodation allows that us, tiny mankind, is able as an individual to find eternal relationship with the omnipresent God and we will be with the glorified only begotten Son of God who has been resurrected from the dead and glorified and now operates as one with the Father in all cosmos and universe multiverses all realities He is the one that we have relationship with God by, through and because of, we have no other course to the invisible, omnipresent God other than Jesus Christ. He is the only way. There is no other way. Our sins, the price of our sin, once repented that we might be forgiven, Acts 3.19 tells us this, repentance is a requirement of forgiveness, that he can wash our sins by the shedding of his blood, we can be healed by his stripes. But think about it. That God, magnificent, great, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, God in his very being was mindful of us in this far distant, tiny little place called earth. That He, God so loved the world, mankind, that he gave his only begotten son that we might be saved. It's your choice. Will you choose to be saved? Will you choose to obey God? Will you hunt for little reasons why this scripture or that scripture is more important than the other? Why don't you just accept all of them? We of the New Testament common faith preach and teach the Bible complete as our roadmap for faith and salvation. That all that we need will be found within those scriptures. Well, sure, we learn other things of technology because we serve a dual role purpose to abide here on earth, to minister, to evangelize, but to see to the needs and to work out our salvation. We of the New Testament common faith Include all the gifts and the spirits as a sitch of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit, the miracle gifts, the healing, all of these things as essential, not an option. They are part of the operation of the church. The experience that they had at Pentecost, where they waited in Jerusalem to be endued with power, is the same experience that is required today. Nothing has changed. We of the New Testament common faith accept no new doctrines of men, no new inventions of men after the time of the apostles' lives on earth. The writings of the apostles, the writings of Jesus, and the Old Testament being fulfilled in that, the law being written upon our hearts, and we're saved into grace, brings all this into the spiritual place of intimacy with God. We preach against sin because sin separates from God. We teach to pray 
according to the leading of the Spirit, rather than us speaking of our own minds. Because our own minds learn of the things revealed by the Spirit flowing and operating through us. Now, if you want to learn about this great and wonderful intimate experience with God and want to live in the joy of the Lord with the fruits of the Spirit alive and operating in your life, about your life, healing the things of your life, and have hope of eternal life with relationship with our King, Lord Jesus. He will be there. He sits upon the throne before us. And even in eternity, there's a special accommodation for us. The great and magnificent expanse of God's creation has many, many things that are outside of our knowledge. Things that go on in other worlds that God created elsewhere. Because He is Almighty. He is God. Omnipresent and able to know all things simultaneously. All things He is the master of all multi-dimensions and all multiverses, all multi-realities. It is up to us to find our identity in Him. Allow God to identify your spiritual identity. And in so doing, you will come to know your calling by dreams and visions and a proper interpretation. I invite all of you to come that live in the Texas Hill Country. To come and be with us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Pipe Creek Community Center. We have a well-trained, well-equipped children's department. And we, we teach the fullness of truth. We teach the fullness of reality in God. We teach the fullness of experience in God. If you want to know God. Come be with us. Experience the joy of the flowing of His Spirit. Experience the allowance of Pentecost as it begins to move in you. We're not going to interfere with that. We want to see everyone come through the magnificence of all experiences of the New Testament. Nothing is held back. There is no contradiction in God's Word. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen agrees wholeheartedly Acts 2.38 agrees wholeheartedly with Matthew 28.19. Together these two scriptures reveal a great revelation. We baptize using Matthew 28.19 and Acts 2.38 in our statement. As we take you under in your covenant fulfillment of baptism by immersion in water. Calling upon that name in baptism. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost is completed in the name of Jesus Christ. For He is the intimacy of God with mankind. You will never see any other image of Almighty God throughout all eternity than our King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Our Savior God, Jesus Christ. God fills all places and all things. Beyond, beyond all imagination, all realities. Above all universes. Multiverses. Beyond the four dimensions in which we are held captive. Beyond the ten dimensions of the theoretics. He is God Almighty. and shall remain so. Forever and evermore. And Jesus Christ. Is our doorway. He is our window. He is the image. That we are allowed to see in intimacy. Of the great invisible God. of glory. This is Pastor Alan Childs. Inviting you to go to a level. And to an experience. That before you have never been able to go. Because you were not allowed to go there. We're not after your money. We only take love offerings to cover the cost of facilitation and facility. And occasionally, if we incur costs to go and perform some special ministry, we'll accept love offering for our ministry. We're of the five-fold ministry and all the helps and all the governments. We're not just pastors. 
prophets, evangelists, teachers. Where are the governments, the helps, apostles? The New Testament common faith takes it all in. No word is taken from Scripture. No page is torn out. If you're looking for life, life more abundantly, we invite you to come be a part of us. And I thank you for being with me in this presentation. We're sharing it with you openly on YouTube. We'll be posting more in the near future. God takes us to some very uncommon places in our common faith. God bless you today. Join us in praying for all the children of the world. That God will protect their little minds and raise them to know about him so that they can make responsible choices as they grow into adults. There is no greater choice than to serve the one true and living God. Bless you. In Jesus' name, farewell. This is Dr. Alan Childs bidding you a blessed day.